having someone that is always there no matter what, that knows you completely and loves you in spite of all your flaws. Welcome to the Ryan Holmes podcast, where our goal is to encourage Christian thinking and Christian living. This week, we are bringing you episode 22. And before we get into it, um, I'm very excited about this week's episode because we're doing a first um, in the history of the podcast. So I'm looking forward to it. But before we get into it, I just wanted to say if you are enjoying this podcast, would you mind give us, giving us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts? That'll just help boost its reach and visibility. It would be great if you could leave us a review as well and give us some positive feedback, or you can do that on whatever audio platform you might be using. You can also support the podcast and the work that I'm doing financially by joining our Locals community, and that's ryanholmespodcast.locals.com, and you can subscribe there for just $5 a month, and there are additional perks that you'll get for joining the uh, the podcast. We are going to be doing some community live streams. You'll also get 10% off our uh, Wretch Redeemed store. That's our podcast merch store. That's wretchredeemed.com. You can get 10% off every order. And I will I'll link to those in the show notes below. If you prefer video format, um, you can check out our YouTube channel and subscribe there. Like the videos, comment, and that'll also help boost its reach and visibility. And uh, as usual, if you have any questions uh, about today's episode, about the podcast in general, faith, the Bible, Jesus, whatever it might be, uh, you can send me an email to ryanholmespodcast at gmail.com. And I don't have every answer, but I will do my best to find one for you or give you a well thought out, crafted answer to the question that you might have. And again, I will link to all that in the show notes below. So thank you, and I I do hope that you enjoy today's episode. Today we are bringing you our very first Ryan Holmes podcast, Marriage Edition, and I have um, what will be my favorite guest of all time, my co-host this week, my lovely wife, Sarah. So Sarah, thank you so much for joining us this week. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. I'm really excited about it. You guys have sent us questions about marriage, and I'm going to be very honest. There has not been a ton of prep that's got that's gone into <laughs> these questions, so these are really going to be kind of off the cuff. But we really wanted to do this episode because um, we 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 have marriage entirely figured out already. <laughs> uh, we're at the point where I think we've arrived, so we really just wanted to um, share our knowledge with you so that you can be better married couples. And if you're single, you can be the best married person that you can be in the future. Isn't that right? Uh, absolutely. No, he kids, he kids. I'm joking. We certainly don't have it figured out in any way, shape or form, but, um, but we've had a ton of feedback and a lot of really good questions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. So we're just gonna, we'll dive right in. So I wanted to say thank you for all those who have sent in questions. We have about, um, yeah, like 14 questions or so. On, on my previous episode, I did a Q&A, and I did four questions in 40 minutes. So <laughs> we have 14 to get through. Uh, so you got I, this. Yes, I hope we can get through it. So first question is from Aurora. Thank you for this question. And actually... There's a second question here that's kind of connected. They're similar questions. So this is from, the first one is from Aurora. The second question is from Lindsay and they're kind of similar questions. So we're just kind of going to tackle them at the same time. So the first question was from Aurora and it's this, how do you solve conflict? Great question. And the second question was, was from Lindsay. How do you navigate disagreement? So Sarah, I will put you on the spot to start with. Okay. Uh, how, do, how, do, how do we solve conflict? Okay. I love solving conflict right away, <laughs> um, Very true. which sometimes creates more conflict because Ryan needs a little while to process usually, which is something we learned early on in marriage was 
that I wanted to fix it right away and Ryan wanted to take a few hours or longer. Um, but now we know that we, if we have a conflict, then I need to give you time to process and then we come mm-hmm. back together and I think we just try to like hear the other person out and yeah. What do you think? I think that, I think that it's come with, navigating conflict and disagreement or solving conflict and navigating disagreement has really, I think it's come through a lot of like needed growth and maturity because if you would have (laughs) talked to us our first year of marriage, we, we did not handle conflict in any Uh, way. First couple of years. (laughs) First couple of years, I would say was not good. So I think, I think it's come with maturity and growth. I think communication is, has been key. Mm -hmm. Things like not assuming the other person's motives um, in a conflict or heated discussion. That's something that that we did early on, um, Mm -hmm. and that just made things worse. Uh, I think when you're the one that's felt hurt, I think that giving the other person an opportunity to explain their side without like using like accusatory or inflammatory language Yes. Uh, in this situation. I think that's been huge. Yes. Um, but I think I would just boil it down to communication and growth and maturity in communication. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, preferring the other person, honoring the other person. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that answers the whole question or not, but. Yeah. Yeah. We still have times where maybe we don't handle it that way. Um, and that just always does not go well. Yes. Uh, but we definitely see a huge difference when we, I guess, use like I statements for me. If I'm bothered by something and I've made up this whole story in my mind of why Ryan said something or what he's done or whatever, and then I used to be like, you did this or you're acting this way or you said it this way. But now trying to like come at it with when you said this I felt this way um so kind of putting it back on myself and giving him an opportunity to explain and not being like you absolutely did this or you absolutely said it this way because of this yeah so it gives you a chance to either apologize if that's how you meant it or to say that's not how I meant it at all um Yeah. And then from the other side, recognizing how recognizing the hurt, even if it's not like the correct portrayal of what actually happened or your intentions, recognizing the hurt, apologizing for it, letting the other person know like that's not what I intended and I'm sorry, but I'm sorry for that. Mm-hmm. Or that that is what it was and I'm sorry for sorry for acting that way. Yes. Um so yeah, I think that's that's yeah. uh, that covers it pretty well. Uh we can't spend too much time on those questions but is there anything else you wanted to add before we move on to the next one sorry no just just know that like we don't have it down pat we're a Mm -hmm. lot better than we used to be uh we still struggle sometimes and we still say hurtful things sometimes um yes well that's a one thing i wanted to say is there's even even though there has been i think there's been growth and maturity in our relationship Mm -hmm. in the seven years that we've been married um there's still times where i know i know what to do (laughs) to solve the issue but I don't want to do it. I we're both want very to blow stubborn. things up. <laughs> yes, we're both stubborn. So there's still times where I'm a little child and I make <laughs> things a lot worse than they need to be. So that's, there's you. still a lot of maturity and growth that's needed. Question number three. Did you want to read that for us? Okay. From Aurora, your biggest marriage advice. That's a doozy. All right, you go first. I would say develop a habit of communication. I think that's going to be a a repetitive thing that I say throughout this episode is uh, developing a a habit of communication because I think communication covers a multitude of issues and areas. So Mm -hmm. it's just like it covers obviously conflict. It covers like what what each other needs Mm -hmm. out of the, the relationship and the marriage you know, your love language is communicating that to the other person so the person understands. I think it just covers a lot. So that would be my mm-hmm. my biggest piece. And after this episode, I'll probably be like, no, there's a better one. But that's the one off the top of my head. Okay. 
Uh, I think this probably falls under communication. Probably a lot of stuff falls under communication. But like, we were just talking about how in marriage, all the things that help a marriage, like that a woman should do, that a man should do, whatever, um, go against our natural... Inclinations? Yes. <laughs> um, and one of those things is love and respect, which mm. we... I mean, I have a hard time with that. And basically... You know, a man craves respect and a woman craves to feel loved. And um, oftentimes it'll be like two people refusing to give each other that because mm. we're waiting to get what we want and need. So say I am refusing to show you respect because I'm waiting to feel loved. Right. And then it's just this never-ending cycle. And whereas I think it's much more... Um, beautiful when we're both just preferring the other, just sacrificially loving the other person and um, deciding, like, I'm going to show you respect even if you don't show me love, which obviously if I show you that respect, it's so easy for you to love me then because you feel respected and cared for. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think just sacrificially loving the other person with no expectations, which I'm terrible at. I have mm. very high expectations, and that causes a lot of problems. Um, and it's not Christ-like <laughs> at all. Right. Um, but, yeah, I feel like that's a, that's a big thing for me. Right. And I find that, it, it, I, feel, I see like an obvious parallel to the Christian life as well, um, where it's like you're you're essentially suppressing your your natural desires, what you want, um, for, um, you know, in the Christian life, you're, you're trying to flee from your sin and pursue Christ and a holy, and a holy, and his righteousness. And, um, and in, in the marriage, in the marriage arena, you're trying to suppress your natural inclinations, your selfish desires, mm -hmm. your selfish tendencies for mm -hmm. the other person, for the goal being, uh, a fruitful and happy marriage, yeah. but um, yeah, that's uh, that's really good. Number four, um, this question will be short and sweet. This is from Sarah's aunt Shannon. So, Aunt Shannon, thank you for this question. How are y'all so stinking cute? Answer: Genetics. Moving on. Genetics. <laughs> I don't Just know. Just kidding. I don't know. Thanks for that question, Aunt Shannon. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Number five. How this is from Mike? Question from Mike, Michael, good friend Michael. Um, has your marriage changed since having a baby? There's kind of a second question that's kind of connected to this. So similar uh, from Lori. This is Sarah's mom. So thank you uh, for this question. But uh, it was, what's the biggest change since having your son? What have you learned that you weren't expecting to learn? So. How has your marriage changed, and what have you learned that you were expecting to learn? I, I would say, first of all, I don't think our marriage has changed necessarily. I think that I think that having a newborn son has just made the things that we've put in place into marriage harder to do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I guess that is the change. Maybe that is the definition of it changing, but. Uh, yeah, I think it's just it's just put more roadblocks in, um, in the way of us kind of keeping that marriage relationship and that closeness mm -hmm. uh, going. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, I think that we did our best to lay a good foundation before having a baby. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter how many years you've been married. <laughs> when you have a baby, I mean, it challenges it. Yes. No matter what. No matter how strong you are as a couple, it is going to just throw a wrench in there and challenge you. Mm -hmm. On my end, things have... I think it's it's changed the marriage in... I don't know if this is allowed to say, but in the physical sense. Mm. <laughs> like... Things aren't quite the same as they were before because you have a baby and things, yeah. you know, 
are totally. a little bit different or a little more challenging in that way. A lot way. more effort has to go into A lot more effort planning. into having intimacy. <laughs> yes. Uh, physical intimacy. <laughs> <laughs> that also, is what we're getting at. Also emotional yeah. intimacy, but... Um, and spiritual and everything like I that, I think too. that it brought out, because there was less opportunity for physical intimacy... It helped us to have more emotional intimacy than we ever had before. And I think maybe for some people, like, you can either just, like, cut off and not have any connection because you had a baby. Or you can really lean into those other areas of connection. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a real positive for us in learning to trust more, to communicate even more. And it, there are some negative ways that it's changed, and I'll talk about that kind of um, in the next question. Um, so I'll explain that. Yeah, we can, we can get to that if you want. Yeah, let's... Um, the, the kind of the two-part or the second part is what have you learned that you weren't expecting to learn? Yeah, so I wasn't expecting to learn, I guess, about the struggles that, like, a mom goes through hmm. after having a baby in marriage like resentment towards your spouse um you know things like that that I love Ryan and I care about him and then I'd feel this resentment coming up and not understand it and you know I didn't really look into those things before having a baby I didn't think that that was really a thing and now I've learned all about it and I'm like wow that is a thing and so that's been something that I've had to like face head on to really pray about a lot um Nothing that Ryan's done or not done. It's just a, and if, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about or can't relate, then I probably sound like a bad wife to you, <laughs> but I promise it's a real thing. And, um, and that I work really hard to, uh, to fight that and to. Well, there's, there's a lot that's, I mean, every mom knows this. There's a lot that's put on the mom. Um. <laughs> There is a lot that's put on the dad, and it is, it is a lot of work, but I've just been blown away by the amount of things that, that she has to deal with. Um, I guess that's something I didn't really fully expect until you get into it, until we got into it. Um, but yeah, just the amount of, uh, the amount of, of kind of pressure and stress and just things that she has to do that are now on her shoulders, where she kind of has to be on. 24 seven. I do as well. It's not like I just sit around and do nothing and <laughs> no, sleep long dad. all day, but, um, but yeah, I just been, I've been amazed at what, what she has to take on through this whole process. Uh, so, so yeah, I think that can make me feel even more guilty because I'm like, he's not trying, he's trying to do his best and help. I'm not trying to be an idiot. I just, <laughs> I just, I just am an idiot. <laughs> Stop. No, but I think that's something that I've learned that I didn't know that, you know, other people went through or dealt with. And, um, and then if you're not careful, that can really take over your marriage. Um, and another thing that I've learned that I wasn't expecting, I kind of expected to learn a little bit about sacrificial love. You know, you think you know what that's like, or I thought I knew what that was like, but I didn't. Hmm. Um, and I'm not saying a baby is the only way to learn that because there's a lot of other areas where, you know, you can learn that in marriage, um, different events that happen in your life that can cause you to really learn sacrificial love. Um, but this was one. And I think learning that with our baby um, kind of helps me to see our marriage in a new light and what sacrificial love really is. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, next question. Let me look at my list here. Is from Abby. This is a great question that um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to give, if we're going to be able to give a really great answer or a robust answer to this. Uh, but the question is, how do you know if you're done having children and timing for them? It's a good question. It's a really good question. Do you have any thoughts off the bat? Off the bat, um, maybe I'll come back to that question one day when I'm old and I've had all my kids. Right. But yeah, I think that we're not. Um, we're not. I don't think we're really in a position to give advice on this. Uh, I can't to give, give advice. A good, a good good answer on it, but I, I don't know. Like when that day comes, that 
that we know. I don't know. I, I assume maybe we'll have peace about it. Um, as far as timing, uh, you know, we have friends who know kind of when they want to start having their next one. And maybe I have an idea, but I don't know that. Um, timing of when to stop having kids? Oh, mm -hmm. I have no idea. I think that's that's very much something that's going to be between you and God. I think it's it is somewhat of a subjective thing where that is that is your relationship with with you and your husband or you and your wife and um and God. I mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to answer that really any better um cuz I just think that you're going to have to find find um peace in that decision between you and God, mm -hmm. uh, not, not going into it saying, you know, God, this is, this is my limit. This is the, I'm not going to have any more than this because most of the time God will, um, humorously, uh, change that reality very quickly, mm -hmm. but, um, not going into it with an attitude of like, I don't, I don't want, I, I want X, Y, Z. I don't want any more than this, any less than this, whatever, mm -hmm. just being open to what God has. Uh, and then following his lead. And also, like, you know, I've told a lot of people this. It's it's really up to, like, if for our marriage relationship, it's up to Sarah, pretty much. Like, she's the one that has and to God. have. And God, <laughs> yes. Uh, that is still very much important. But at the end of the day, you know, like, the, um, well, at the end of the day, it, it is God. But there is a secondary kind of uh, uh, reason or qualifier there. And that is, that is the mom. That's the the wife because I know that she has to put herself through a lot in order to have kids. Well, and, and some uh, I mean everybody's different. Like some women yeah, are mm -hmm. um totally like happy and just can have one kid after the next and just roll with it and but some women deal with like postpartum depression mm -hmm. really bad or um like just go through really really tough pregnancies or things like that or recoveries. Um, so everybody's different. Like, mm -hmm. um, and I would say, don't let, don't even let what we're saying now, don't let others, don't let us determine, uh, what that's going to look like for you. Uh, I know that, um, you probably will deal with social pressures, family pressures, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Uh, just have confidence in your relationship with Christ, um, in your partnership, uh, in that relationship as well between you and your husband, um, your husband and wife and God. Um, so that's just something I'll throw in there is don't let, don't let others determine what that's going to be for you. Yeah. Uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's a question that I'll also have probably for, mm -hmm. you know, someone older and wiser, just how they knew when they were done and all right. that. So. All right. I hope that answered your question somewhat, Abby. Clear as mud. Uh, next question is from Akeem. Actually, the next two questions are from Akeem. So thank you for um, sending those in, Akeem. Uh, the first is, what are one or two of your favorite inside jokes and why? We have so many, I feel like. I, don't, I can't even like, bring one to mind. Like, there's yeah. so many. And I, I feel like they're all in connection with the shows that we watch. Probably. And specifically The Office. <laughs> There's a lot with that. Exactly. Like the office which applies I'm not going to say on here. Yes. Um, or just like things that we've, just things that have happened in the years. And, yeah. But I, if I can, I don't know. Like they just come to your mind in the moment. So. Just not this moment. Just not this moment. Right now. Sorry, Akeem. No answer for Sorry, you. Sorry, Akeem. Uh, but I'll try and answer your second question. Or we will. Uh, it is this. Do you celebrate both U.S. and Canadian holiday traditions? Well, we've celebrated Canadian holidays for the last seven years. Most of them. Some of them are kind of silly. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, we just made up ones. But <laughs> most, I think mostly, like, it depends on the country that we're in at the time. <laughs> um, but I think we've tried to, at, at times we have tried to do both. We'll visit but, my like, family and do yeah. US if you, holidays. Yeah, if you're in Canada, stuff. it's hard to celebrate like U.S. Thanksgiving um, in a big way because, you know, it's just nothing's happening um, at that time in, in Canada. But, but honestly, even Canadian Thanksgiving is like 
is is minimized in comparison to how uh, Americans celebrate Thanksgiving. And I would say almost every holiday. I think in the U.S. Yeah, it's they like go it's, they go big. In Canada, they're kind of reserved. So that, I mean, I told you we'll answer the question. I'm not sure. We if like we to did. celebrate different ones in each country. Yeah, because it's fun. You get you get um, you get to celebrate more more holidays than just the I'm regular. All about ones. the party, so yes. Just kidding. We <laughs> love the party. We party. <laughs> uh, all right. Next question. Um, well, well, the next well, several. <laughs> we have how many more questions? One, two, three, four, five more questions, and they're all from Lindsay. Let me preface. Lindsay and I are great friends, and uh, I actually knew that this would be coming because Lindsay loves the questions, and Mm -hmm. so Lindsay, I'm going to try to answer them, okay? This is for you. Question one, Um, (laughs) what's the best part of marriage? I feel, like some, I feel like there's some things we can't say on the podcast, but um, <laughs> being ridiculous. Sorry, sorry. Okay, best part of marriage. Best part and worst part go hand in hand. Is that the next question? Yeah, the next question is what's the worst part? So. Okay, um, I feel like those go hand in hand because the best part is having someone that is for me, anyways, having someone that is always there no matter what, that knows you completely and loves you for you in spite of all your flaws or for all your flaws and all the good qualities you bring. And um, just knowing at the end of the day that person's going to be there. And Mm -hmm. if you can't tell, I'm a a person who needs security. That's my big thing. (laughs) Security, loyalty, and so that's the that's a big thing for me. The best thing for me is um, just having someone there that loves me. And um, mm-hmm. but the flip side of that would be <laughs> having somebody who knows like every last well for the most part who knows you the best, knows your flaws the best, knows your sins the best. Um, but then you know still chooses to there's there's a good and bad there. Because that person still chooses to love you and can can judge out of anybody on this planet can judge your heart most accurately, um, aside from God, and still chooses to love you. Which mm-hmm. is there's a good and a bad there, but um, I think it's a reflection of God's love for us as well. Because God's God can judge us perfectly and still chooses to love us. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so that's. And the worst, the worst part about somebody who can judge your heart so accurately, and sees your actions, sees you behind closed doors, um, the worst part is that person can easily call those things out in your life, and and it's very, it's hard because of pride. Uh, I I can attest to this. I'm a prideful person. I don't want my sins called out, and uh, so that that's that can be kind of difficult mm-hmm. but but as well that helps shape us and marriage does help help us become more like christ yeah and i think one of the worst parts is um so often hurting the person that you love the most mm-hmm. um because we're around each other and we know the the things that we can say or do that will really hurt the other right and um yeah, I feel like that's probably the worst part is um, being able to hurt someone often if we want. Um, mm-hmm. Or uh, oftentimes yeah. intentionally. And that's, yeah. that's the sad part about it. Yes. So, but there's more good things than bad. So. Oh, of course there is. Yeah. It's, um, I guess we should talk about that a little bit more. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, having that, that, like Sarah mentioned, that person to rely on, that closeness, like, you'll never experience kind of that level of of um of intimacy and not just like physical intimacy but emotional connection and spiritual connection and understanding somebody so 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 greatly um you know it's it's an amazing thing and so mm-hmm. it's it really is one of the best parts about marriage 
mm-hmm. is is having that best friend and you know that person that you can continuously grow closer to um, and learn to love even more than you did the day before. So mm-hmm. it's yeah, it's a special thing. Next question: How do you work through having different opinions? Hmm. Hmm. Now, some couples may have more differences in their kind of worldview outlook, um, whether it's politics, whether it's whether it's their faith. Um, we don't have a ton of those. Not in those areas. There's some. I mean, even when it comes to uh, politics, faith. Um, there may be like minor things that we'll talk mm-hmm. about sometimes that maybe I have some opinions on, but they're not like so far off from the opinions that you have. We're not like right. total opposites in that way. Um, but when we have those things come up, I think that if we try to hear the other person out, um, mm-hmm. When it comes to like finances or things like that, differences of opinion. Um, yeah, I, I feel like we just kind of try to hear the other person out. But we're also not um, super intense. Well, maybe I'm more intense, but super intense people. So um, it's we don't like we challenge each other. But it, we don't really butt heads on a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't press the issue too much. No, or there's not like these really difficult things that we just can't agree on. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that's I think just with difference of opinions, just trying to hear the other person out and understand where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you have anything to add? I don't really have anything to add to that. I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> See? Exhibit A. <laughs> <laughs> I just agree. He just nods his head yes, whatever she says. Um, next question. Where am I? Well, this is a good one. How do you keep the friendship alive without becoming roommates? It's a good one. Yes. Start? I'm always going to come back to communi- communication. Um, I think that's huge i think that's key again it covers so many different um, areas of marriage um i mean for example just again the needs that i have the needs that she has uh you know you you can go into marriage like with certain expectations um and you'll quickly find out that those expectations are not going to be met very quickly uh if you just assume certain things about the other person um, or assume that they should know certain things, mm. um, especially guys, because we're dense. Um, <laughs> but uh, you said it. <laughs> but um, or we're just oblivious to things sometimes. But I think that growing in that area of communication, communicating your needs to the other person, saying this is what I need, this is what I enjoy, um, this is my love language, um, whatever that might be. So the other person knows clearly, okay, this is what I have to do to meet their needs. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's huge. And I think that you can be just just clear and upfront about it. Mm-hmm. Um, don't be wishy-washy. And, and, and that way, then, again, the other person knows mm-hmm. exactly what you need. And then you, those needs can be met, and that brings you closer together. Um, it's not always going to be perfect. Um, Sarah communicates her needs to me, and I don't always get the hint. So it is something that you can't just communicate once. It's something that you need to continuously be communicating um, to each other. As you know, obviously there's, there's a point where you have to figure things out. Mm-hmm. I get that. But, um, but always be in a, in a constant kind of mode of communication. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? Let's see. <laughs> Keep the friendship alive without becoming roommates. I think this has been more of a struggle since having a baby. Yeah. Uh, for me anyways. Um, I think having time for like dates or like just going out intentionally talking to each other. Um, like asking questions 
about each other, mm. uh, you know, really trying to connect in that way because it's so easy to kind of fall into that trap, especially with the baby where it's just like routine, routine, like, hey, bye, good morning, good night, you know, when was the last time I kissed you? I don't even know. Right. Um, yeah. And then you're just like, you're you're not like mad at each other. You're just going through the motions. And mm-hmm. um, so in order to have that friendship that's alive, I think just really intentionally um, asking the other questions and really trying to connect with each other um, to, yeah, promote conversation and mm-hmm. um, to where you're not, like, I think having things in common that you like to do, um, that you'll go out and do, or that you'll do from home, like, it doesn't have to be something you spend money on, just something you do from home, because, um, just so you're not, like, living separate lives in separate bedrooms, um, and by that, I, I mean, um, like, never doing anything together, just mm-hmm. doing your own hobbies and whatever, um, so, yeah, intentionally having a conversation about it. For sure, yeah, and obviously, like, the, the, the main staples, you know, spending time in prayer together, uh, mm-hmm. um, asking each other about, you know, your, your, your personal walks with Christ, um, spending time reading the Bible together. Uh, these are, these are things that are huge and we are still trying to navigate right or now. Like marriage specific, um, books. Devotionals or, or books. Yeah. yeah. And we're still trying to figure that out seven months into, um, you know, our new life stage with our son. So it's, it's a work in progress for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think you can never really, um, that's something that just comes to mind is never, never get apathetic to a place where you think you're good. I think I'm guilty of that. I think like, oh, we're, we're good. Everything's fine. Um, but, um, Sarah might be feeling something or sensing something or whatnot, um, that needs to be talked about or whatever. And I'm like, what, why are you bringing this up? You know what I mean? Like, I thought we're okay. We're good. And I'm, I'm guilty of that, mm-hmm. um, myself. So, uh, I'm kind of speaking to myself on this, but never get to a point where you're not working. Like you have to be continuously working. Uh, don't go out of your way to, to just look for things that are necessarily, um, uh, don't necessarily need to be worked on, but, but also I always have an attitude of, you know, cultivating the, the marriage relationship. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Was that a bunch of word vomit? <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, last question. This oh, is the final question of the yes. episode. This is the this is your we, favorite we, one, Lynn. We save the best for last for everybody. How do you keep things spicy? Mm, caliente. <laughs> <laughs> Hot sauce. Hot sauce. Um, but, uh, you know, we're going to keep this PG, of course. Mm-hmm. But We're all adults here. How do we keep things spicy? Um, no. Uh, for real, though, how do we keep things spicy? I don't know. I think if you're meaning just physical connection, um, intimacy, we, I think, really have to be proactive and... Yeah. Um, like make, make Ryan, one of Ryan's top love languages is a uh, physical touch and I'm not mm-hmm. a big physical touch person. So I have to remind myself, Hey, show him some affection, <laughs> um, which I like hey, affection. T- touch me. <laughs> Stop. Don't say that. Which, don't get me wrong. I, I like affection. Obviously we have a child. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think just going out of our way to like speak the other person's love language, kind of keep that spark alive. Mm-hmm. Little flirty eyes here and there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and again, I'm I know you're probably annoyed hearing this, everybody, but I'm gonna come back to communication because we are tired of hearing that. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just but kidding. um and, and like as you as you kind of again grow and mature in your marriage, you get to know each other. Uh better and know the likes and dislikes of the other person and that comes through communication um and um and just being open and unfront uh, open and upfront about those things with your spouse um mm-hmm. your needs and your desires and um yeah 
Yeah, and I think that as you do grow and mature um, in in your marriage relationship, uh, and you're constantly cultivating the marriage relationship, I don't think there's a necessarily a need to like pursue spicy, if you will, um, mm-hmm. because I think that if you're over already cultivating the the relationship and communicating your needs, communicating your wants and desires, and you're doing your best to meet that in this in in your spouse then then i think that just it naturally comes along and obviously with the baby you have to put a lot more effort into doing that um, on a regular basis yes but um yeah just looking to prefer the other person and do the things that they want to do yeah kiss for longer yes try to make that because well i guess that maybe that's kind of what she's getting at too um yeah. But that's been, yeah, hard with a baby is like, just give a little peck. But it's like, take the time, try to kiss each other for a little longer. <laughs> that sounds so negative. To make out. Just do it. Ah. Hold hands. <laughs> Hold hands. Kiss for longer. Those things are going to lead to something else. So I think that's, um, you know, just put the effort in. And um, it's I don't a, know. It, maybe don't look like a sack of trash all the time (laughs) um yeah i mean that was a really super spiritual note (laughs) to end on in this podcast well that was not exactly a spiritual question so that's true that's true and we did leave it for last so blame us um we're only spiritual sometimes so yeah some of the time we're a work in progress but i hope that that was interesting for you i hope that it was helpful i uh, I know there's probably, there, there's single people who listen to this as well. It's not advice. Um, it's just our experience. It's our experience. Uh, I hope maybe you can, um, it can give you some perspective into the, the life of being, or married life. Um, and uh, for those married couples, we'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Whether you're single, whether you're married, give us some feedback, give us your thoughts. And uh, we'll interact on that for sure. Mm -hmm. And I just hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Sarah, thank you so much for joining me and being my co-host this week. You're welcome. (laughs) Uh, Again, if you have any questions, uh, please send me me an email to ryanholmespodcast at gmail.com. And uh, we will sign off on that. And I just want to encourage you to encourage others to think about their faith and live it out. And we will see you next week. Adios!